Barnstorm, Medicare for All? Yes. So I assume you're all ready to fight for Medicare for All? Yeah. yeah. Okay, can you make that louder though? We've got a big fight ahead of us. Louder, Medicare for All. We're gonna win this fight. All right, so, okay. Um, Maybe we want to get started with uh, our, one of our guests then. Uh, that just walked, strolled in. Um, He's got to give his hugs first. Yeah, after, after he hugs everyone, you have to hug everyone. <laughs> Three hugs. So, a surprise guest, uh, Ask Clara is here, a state assembly. Woo! Been, been a big supporter of uh, uh, single payer. Was one of the co-authors of the California SB 562, and so if you could uh, give us a couple minutes of time. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks here. Well, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for doing what you are doing. Uh, we know we have a problem. We've had a problem for a very long time, and we have people making decisions uh, about their health, about their well-being, about the well-being of their children of their parents, and all too often those decisions are made with their finances in mind. That is not right. Healthcare is a human right, and we need to keep fighting until we have a community, a state, and a nation that recognizes that. So we, we've been you know, somewhat tricked, and this is not the only <laughs> at the area that we've been tricked in, but over the decades we've been tricked into believing that um, you know, we need to not just pay for our health care, but as costs go up, that oh, it's inevitable. We can't do anything about it, that we don't have a choice. We've been tricked into believing that the way the system is is the way that it has to be. We know that's not the case. We know that there are other countries that do it better. We know that whenever we try even to have a conversation, that extremely wealthy interests shut us down. That's what we saw in Sacramento. Even last year when I tried to bring up a bill just to talk about cost containment and putting together a commission that actually can set, I mean, what a crazy concept, <laughs> to actually set how much things cost in a hospital. So that if you go to one hospital, it might cost you $1,600, go to another one, it might cost $100,000. The, the idea that we should need to do something about that, even that was so controversial. And nationally, uh, there was a conversation about it and they you know, have too much influence to shut it down. So I am convinced that the only way that we're gonna be able to get healthcare for everyone, the only way that we're gonna get healthcare, not just, not, not just access, you know, the ACA, Obamacare, was a great step in terms of getting some access, but it didn't deal with the affordability. And that's why we're here. Having Medicare for all, ensuring that we pull everyone together as a community, as the way it should be, as a loving community, and say, wait a minute, we wanna make sure everyone's taken care of. Not just those that have money, not just those that have access, not just those that are healthy, which is kind of a weird thing that you have to say that, but when they try to you know, take away your health care because of pre-existing conditions, that's what health care is for. It's for the conditions that you have. If you're healthy, you don't need the health care as much as those that have pre-existing or other uh, ailments. But the bottom line is that if all of us pull together as a community, we know that drives down the cost of health care. We also know that what you all are doing is a shock to the system. And this is not supposed to be easy, but we cannot give up. And I, and I gotta tell you, one of the, um, you know, with the, the co-author of SB 562, uh, and someone that continues to believe that we need systemic change in our healthcare system. One of the criticisms that I hear that all of you hear, whether you're at a dinner party, or you're talking to a family member, well, it costs so much money. Well, yeah, it costs so much money. It's supposed to cost so much money. But the point is that we already spend so much money, we spend more money than anyone else on the face of the earth, and we're not taking care of everyone. 
So when someone says it costs a lot of money, you say, you know what, we're doing a pretty good job of spending a lot of money right now, and we're not taking care of everyone. So how about we do it a better way? And you know, we'll figure out the financing. It doesn't happen overnight. It'll take many years for us to do it. But we first have to say that we're committed to do it. When JFK said we're gonna land a rocket on the moon, it's not like he was talking about doing it the next day. He said, by the end of this decade, we're gonna land a rocket on the moon. And guess what? We came together, we invested, we did what many thought was impossible. Well, this is something that many think is impossible. I don't think anybody in this room thinks it's impossible. So we have to convince more and more people that it's immoral to continue to have a system the way that we currently do. It's immoral that people are dying because they don't have access to healthcare in the wealthiest place on earth, especially here in Silicon Valley, where we have companies that are valued at a trillion dollars, and yet the second that we bring up the idea of, wait a second, maybe we can do a little bit about our tax system, maybe we can actually do something about the profit taking at the expense of our health and our bodies to take care of everyone. It's crazy to think. So anyway, um, I just want to thank all of you. Uh, I want to thank all of you for not giving up, for being persistent, for making sure that we're not going to stop until everyone has health care, that everyone has health care they can afford, that we all take care of one another, and that we join dozens of other countries that already do it. They all do it in different ways. We'll do it our way. But we'll do it in a way to make sure that Everyone has health care. We make sure that our country codifies in law that health care is a human right and act, starts to act like it. And so I'm just grateful to all of you uh, for continuing uh, this march. Uh, it's going to take a lot more. Uh, I know a lot of you have given already so much. It's going to take a lot more, and we have to grow our ranks. And we're going to do that by being honest, by being diligent, and by never giving up. So thank you all so much. So, um, you know, a big part of what we're doing today is trying to push politicians to do the right thing. I think there's a few politicians like us who are coming along with us. And they're not going to end up pushing, and, uh, and we really have the people like us in our corner. Okay, so um, let's get going. The reason we're here, <clears throat> get some water. The purpose of today's barnstorm is really to get you guys plugged in and how we're actually going to help make this fight. So the goal is, is really simple. We really need, as Asa was saying, we need overwhelming grassroots pressure to get things to work the way we want. The decision makers aren't going to listen, aren't, aren't going to do the things without our pressure. We need to give the bottom up pressure to get Medicare for all. Um, so we've got a really jam-packed agenda today, so I'm going to try to move more quickly. Um, First, we're going to take a few minutes to get to know each other. Then we're going to have a very, very quick, uh, quickly recap of where things stand with the, with the bill. And then finally, the most important part, we're going to go over the volunteer program and how to get you guys engaged. Okay, so let's get going. Um, so, um, my name is Bob Jung. I'm uh, with the Santa Clara County Single Payer Healthcare Coalition, and they've been organizing this along with uh, the Green Party and DSA are also been helping us. I'm also part of Green Party and DSA, so I wear multiple hats. I guess I'm sort of your organizer for hire, um, except the pay is really low, so I just get free food, and, and, and that's all I get. Uh, so why is Bob here today? You know. Um, I've been passionate about healthcare. I think maybe the, the bigger, maybe a better uh, word maybe is I'm outraged at the healthcare crisis in this country. Um, and this is something that we really need to take care of. Um, you know, there's, there's healthcare insurance is, is such a hard thing for people. We have still, even with ACA, ACA got a bunch of people on the, on the healthcare insurance. But still, there's 30 million people in the United States 
that don't have health care insurance. There's 41 million that are underinsured, meaning that they can't afford the co-pays, they can't afford the deductible, so essentially they don't have health care insurance. You know, so, so this is a really a, a tragic situation. And, you know, it, and this is really a life and death situation. There was a study in 2009 by Harvard that said that 45,000 people die every year because they don't have health care insurance. 45,000 people. That, that's 120 people a day. That's five people an hour. From the time this barnstorm begins and ends, that means eight people. Eight people are gonna die because they don't have health care insurance. This is tragic. This is, this is like I said, health should be a human right. Health care should be a human right. Yeah, all right. Thank you, thank you. And it's just not people are dying. I mean, one out of three people in America have trouble paying their bills, their, health, their Medicare bills, right? Over half a million people, 530,000 people go into bankruptcy every year in the United States because of medical bills. So what happens when those things happen to people? That means they can't buy the food for their family, they can't pay their rent, they can't turn on the heat when it's cold. This is causing a really life tragic situation for people. So we need to get this stuff fixed. And so, but of course I'm outraged. But being outraged doesn't change anything. So I decided a few years ago, I should actually get up and try to do something. So that's why I joined the coalition, all right? Because we really need grassroots mobilization to push these things. You know, we were fighting for SB 562 of Ash, right? We were out there going to Sacramento. We were going knocking on doors. This is the things we do. So this is why Bob is here. I want to do that. But, you know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just a talking head. There's actually quite a few people wearing these shirts. We've been working on these things, but there's not enough of these. We need to mobilize bigger, stronger, deeper if we're going to win these things. So that's why I'm here. That, that's my story. I'm here because I'm trying to get you guys to join us, to go out there when we're knocking doors, to go out there when we go out and, uh, at the table at the farmer's markets, to build your own canvassing uh, events. And so, so that's why I'm here. So one of the things we want to do is get some of the people to come up here and tell their stories. I mean, you know, I read off a bunch of statistics about, you know, how many people die and whatnot. But, you know, what really moves people are these stories. It's not just about how many bankruptcies. It's about your uncle who went bankrupt and lost his business or things like that. Those are things that really, really get into us, right, and drive us. And, and get us inspired, make us stronger when we're out there fighting for Medicare for All. So, you know, we have some volunteers that would want to come up and just give us a one, two minute story. Great. Hi, I'm Roxanne. I'm an advocate for my community, Transgender Women. And this is really important for our community. Even though I'm a retiree from the state and the state says, yes, yes, we support transgender women, they turn their policy uh, control over to Blue Cross Blue Shield. And Blue Cross right. Blue Shield does deny, deny, delay, delay, and refuse. And so my community ends up with no health insurance. And what people don't realize on the cost is we're being denied even the universal employer, the U.S. Army. We can't go in there because of supposedly the cost. The thing people forget is the Army spends more on the little blue pills for Viagra than if they provided coverage for transgender women. So that's a fake argument and it's very important to my community because right now we're left with no insurance coverage at all. Thank you, Roxanne. Okay. Well, why not? All right. So I was in the back talking to my friends. Um, when I was 17, I was diagnosed with cancer. And um, because I was human trafficked, um, and I, I wasn't until I was 28 that I was able to pay off the last bit of debt for that. So it messed up my credit, and I didn't have any insurance until I was 32. And so it really impacts the lives on a social matter. Um, also, I'm LGBT, I, I'm a lesbian. Um, we don't have, and our, our healthcare doesn't provide if we wanted to have in vitro or you know support to have a child. Um, and it's just, especially with my um, trans sisters, and, you know, brothers, they really do have a really um, hard time as well. And as much as we talk about, you know, Medicare for all, we have to be talking about the intersectionality of people not having access to have coverage. So 
I just want to share that it does impact people on a social, especially those who live in poverty and don't have access. And what I would like to see is more people. There's a lot of great people in this room who I respect and admire, but we need to get the message to those people who are feeling comfortable with their great insurance to be a part of this same conversation. Thank you very much. Do you want to come up and... coverage, California Care, yeah. as a 60 year old in my zip code, my insurance premium is between $850 to $1,100 per month. My doctor's visit would cost $75 a visit. It doesn't cover prescriptions and my deductible per year is $6,500. So before, and this you could look up right now on CaliforniaCovered.com or whatever the website is that's supposed to offer us great affordable insurance. And I am a techie in the industry. I've made a life in tech, but I'm old considerably, they think. And so um, I work as a contractor at three-month contracts, six-month contracts, provided no insurance whatsoever by some of the agencies. Some of them, the insurance doesn't kick in until 60 days, and sometimes your contract ends at 90 or four months or five months. This is unbelievable. More people would be donors. You can't tell I'm a kidney donor. I can't even tell I'm a kidney donor. And there are people waiting to live and that more people would stand up if we had coverage, I believe. So we need to mobilize you guys. We need to mobilize Medicaid for All support as much as possible to put pressure on Lofgren and SU to actually get behind this bill, fight for it, and vote for it. So, you know, Rokana has been really good. So, you know, we're going to ask people to put pressure on, on Lofgren and, and uh, SU, but we can, or we'll use the real counter folks to put pressure on Pelosi. Um, so, let me see where I'm at. Okay. Um, so how do we actually build that pressure? And how do we actually get them to sign on? What we're gonna do is we're gonna canvas. We need to talk to the constituents. We need to talk to hundreds and even thousands of their constituents. Go across their districts. Get them to call their, their Congress people and tell them, we want this, we want you to support this, we want you to co-sponsor this. And to get to that scale, we need this room of volunteers to all be active. And we need more than that to get out there. We're gonna make this happen. We're gonna push Nancy Pelosi to do the right thing. Um, so, to scale up, we're gonna talk about this some more, uh, about how this canvassing works. And but I think, um, are we queued up? Um, so the uh, nurses union, who has been very, very much in the forefront of We have some nurses. Stand up. Thank you very much. So the nurses union has just put together Hot of the Press is a new video. You'll be among the first to see it. It just came out Thursday, and this is the first day of this barnstorming week, so um, let's play the video. Greetings, sisters and brothers, and welcome to the National Movement for Medicare for All. We are so proud to be by your side in this fight. Medicare for All is the moral imperative of our time. The state of healthcare in the United States today is absolutely unacceptable. People are dying every day because they can't afford their meds or they can't afford to go to the hospital. Over a hundred million Americans 
are either uninsured or deeply underinsured. People can have insurance, but they have these high co-pays, so therefore they don't really use the insurance. And so, so what good is that? For nurses, this is just a core value. We understand that every single human being deserves health care. Health care is a human right. We know from the nurses we represent, emergency rooms get filled up with waiting lines because people aren't receiving the preventative care that could have prevented those visits to emergency rooms. And what we're seeing is the unnecessary suffering of our patients and at times even death. Our life expectancy rates are going down. Every other wealthy nation has a healthcare system which looks hard for its people. The amount of money that we spend per person on healthcare is ridiculous. It's greater than $10,000. Why is it that we have such poor outcomes? You know, our healthcare system is messed up because it's based on making profit, making money. How much money can you make off this person's illness? Pharmaceutical companies are making $125 billion in profit. For nurses working in a healthcare system that values profit over people has been heartbreaking for us. And it's something that we simply can not continue to do. People should be able to go to the doctor. They shouldn't have to die. They shouldn't have to delay care. Nobody should go bankrupt for care that they need. I think in this country we've seen a tremendous growth for support for Medicare for all, and that is across the spectrum. The broken, expensive healthcare system doesn't discriminate against your political party. 70% of Americans in general support Medicare for all, 84% of Democrats support Medicare for all, and 52% of Republicans support Medicare for all. We're just so excited that there is this level of enthusiasm for Medicare for all, and we know that that's what it's going to take. Now we just have to make sure that Congress catches up. In order to win, we need to have a plan. For three decades now, we have have been working tirelessly in the halls of our legislature, at the state level, at the federal level, at our bedside, in the streets, with our patients, with the community, to ensure that everybody has health care security. And we're never going to stop until we achieve it. We are at the forefront. We know that it's possible. So for the past six or seven months, we've been working on brand new Medicare for All legislation. We are so grateful to the leadership of Pramila J. Paul and her ability to understand and to listen and to craft and develop in conjunction with all of the stakeholders, nurses and doctors, patients, community, to draft this bill of Medicare for All. The bill that I'm getting ready to introduce takes an existing system, the Medicare system, highly popular, provides health care to our seniors across the country, and it expands it to ensure that every American is covered. The bill covers a comprehensive list of services, all primary care, all preventative care, all hospital stays and hospital care. It also covers dental, vision, audiology, podiatry, long-term care services and supports for people with disabilities and the elderly. It covers the cost of prescription drugs, mental health care, and substance abuse treatment. The list goes on. The United States is one of the most wealthiest, richest country in the world. We've got to focus our resources where it needs to be the best, best, the best we can do, and that's taking care of people. For 70 years, people in the UK have had world-class free healthcare at the point of view. We built it at a time when the country was on its knees following the Second World War. So if a politician ever tells you that we can't afford healthcare in the United States, they're lying to you. The reality is that this bill is going to save the country trillions of dollars. We will save everyday Americans like you and I money every year. But most importantly, it ensures that health care is a right and not a privilege. We can't do it just through the electoral process. We actually have to build this movement for Medicare for All. Until we get to a point where our citizens demand it, it's not going to happen because the corporation want to make money. We're also up against the Republicans who are trying right now to give people less health care, not more. And we're also up against the establishment Democrats who think that these watered down policies that still leave the for-profit insurance industry in the driver's seat are going to be the solution. And we know that the only real solution is Medicare for all. We can't think small when the crisis that we have is so enormous. 
We don't want access to health care, we want health care. Insurance is not health care, we understand this. People fight every day to get their insurance companies to pay for things that they need. We know that we're up against a lot in this fight. Winning Medicare for All is not going to be easy. What big idea in the history of our country has ever been a small idea that moves us in big steps? We want to take Medicare for All across the finish line. The next step is we need to push. Our job is just to demonstrate that it's possible. It's right here in front of us, and we have this concrete legislative path to get it done. Together in the next few months, we are going to knock on thousands of doors, stand outside grocery stores and farmers markets all over the country, and we're going to talk to our own neighbors about our broken health care system, talk to them about the idea of Medicare for All and this new House bill, ask them for their support, and ask them to call your House rep. We need to make the legislators decide, are you with the people or not? We know the congressional staffers have to track every single phone call that comes in and what bill that it's about. And when you and your community can help drive even a couple hundred phone calls through a couple of canvases to your House Rep's office, that makes a huge difference in their support for Medicare for All. And if your House member has already co-sponsored the new Medicare for All bill, that's awesome. You should thank them and then help build support in your community on Speaker Nancy Pelosi because we're also going to need her support to pass this bill in the House. The country is with us. We can do this. Together, we will. It's going to be a historical victory, and we'll all look back on that, and our children and grandchildren will thank us for it. We are going to win. Thank you for standing up to help save countless lives. Greg noted I omitted something. I thought it was obvious, but another big part of the organization has been the National Nurses United Union. They've been a big supporter and they're running the whole national program. So I thought it was obvious, but Grace, I forgot to mention them <laughs> earlier on. But we have another special guest. We have the president of the CNA here, and I guess she'll tell us more about it. I'm really excited to be here, and my name is um, Melinda Markowitz. I am president of the California Nurses Association. I'm also a member of National Nurses United, which is the largest union for registered nurses. We uh, represent uh, all nurses in acute care hospital. And I want the message from the nurses is that we're 100% supportive of what you're doing, what our, we are doing, to change our healthcare system to get Medicare for all. Yeah. You know, registered nurses know very well that our healthcare system is about profits, not the patient's need. And we see on a daily basis patients coming in with life-threatening uh, conditions to the hospital. Um, for instance, like high blood pressure, then develops into a stroke. And these things are totally preventable if the patients get the immediate care that they need before this happens, prevention, maintain their health, or improve their health. And it doesn't happen, and it's not because the patients don't want to get the care, they do. But often they can't afford the co-pays, the deductibles, the out-of-pocket expenses, and they can't even afford to pay for the medication and to take it how their, their physician wants them to take it so they don't develop these problems. And that is disgraceful. The, the other thing is, our healthcare system, it is broken. It is not sustainable, and it's sick, yep. really sick. And nurses are tired of having their patients suffer, their families suffer, and the community, because we all suffer. They all have had you know, their lives put at risk because of the profits in our healthcare. And the beautiful thing is that we've created this movement across the United States for thousands of people that want Medicare for all. 
And I believe, I believe, and our nurses believe that we can do it. So let's do it. Yeah. But I want to hear you all say, let's do it. Do it. Do it. I can't hear you. Let's do it. And let's, let's make history because we can do it. We can do it together. And it's happening. And we'll do it together. Thank you. Nassim Nuri and Christine Pepin um, from the Green Party of Santa Clara County. Can you tell us uh, about this event and what you guys are doing here today? Okay. Oh, sure, sure. So we're here today in San Jose uh, as, uh, to an event which is uh, to help fight for Medicare for All. And it's, it's uh, co-sponsored by the Santa Clara County Single-Payer Healthcare Coalition and, and us, the Green Party of Santa Clara County. And um, yeah, we're here to inform people about Medicare for All and to all you know, come together um, in order to win this fight, to take it to Congress and to make sure that it passes, basically. So what do you guys think about the upcoming bill? Do you think it has promise? I do think it has promise. I think if we can get a lot of people to support it in Congress, it would be terrific. However, we have unfortunately not seen the bill itself. We have heard from conversations that Dr. Marco de Flores has had with the JICA staff that there might be some issues that we'd like to have changed. So those uh, issues have been outlined by uh, a new organization that Dr. Marco de Flores has actually backed. It's HOPE, it should be E, so uh, you can check it out and look at those um, you know, issues that we want to push further on. Uh, but we really want people to be supporting NEMA, new Medicare for all and single payer. So one of the issues that we want to change is the fact that for profit healthcare providers were left uh, apparently in the bill. Maybe we can push uh, progressives in Congress to take that out so that we can have a single payer. Excellent. And um, I believe single payer is a huge part of the Green New Deal. Um, what do you think of? Uh, is do you think that's uh, a important aspect of the Green New Deal that's very popular now? Absolutely, it should be part, absolutely part of the Green New Deal. Unfortunately, we haven't. I mean, the Green New Deal, the, the um, resolution that was introduced by Alexandria Ocasio Cortez and um, Ed Markey, um, isn't very clear about it. It doesn't. It doesn't say anything like single payer or healthcare for all or um, you know like Medicare for all and things like this. Just as like you know access to healthcare. And and I don't think it even has any, the, the the word guaranteed healthcare. And I think it should be in there. I mean, this is definitely part of the new, the new deal, just like housing, you know, transportation, the whole, the whole plan to address climate change and the, um, and the consequences, and the devastating consequences on low-income communities, should be taken care of in Medicare. Sure. Excellent. Thank you guys for talking to us. Is there anything else uh, you wanted to mention while we're here? Thank you. Let's actually look up the real green new deal, which has a four-part comprehensive platform. It's a policy platform and program that the Greens have incorporated since uh, 2010 with Harry Matthews first introducing it in his uh, uh, campaign. So if you'd like to look it up, just Google Green Party, Green New Deal, and you can find it on the gp.org site. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> right. Okay, can you uh, introduce yourself and tell us what organization you're with? Hi, uh, my name is Kyle. I'm part of the Silicon Valley Democratic Socialists of America. Excellent. And can you tell us about this event today? Uh, this is the uh, barnstorming for the Medicare for All, the national campaign, um, hosted by the National Nurses United. And is this a... Uh, is single payer something that the D DSA of uh, Silicon Valley endorses? Yes, yes. We're definitely very interested in single payer now, and, and nothing else would be tolerated, I guess, in that sense. Yeah. Are you optimistic about the upcoming bill? Um, I think the bill itself uh, looks good. In terms of its chances of passing, um, there's a lot of work to be done, um, especially since 562 failed. I'm not particularly confident, but definitely, hopefully, to build ties with the community and stuff like that. 
Excellent. And uh, speaking of ties to the community, I noticed that you did sign up to do your own uh, canvassing event. Um, can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, our uh, member Solemn um, was doing some research and he found a very low income uh, part of the district that we were very interested in targeting and we would love for people to help and come out. And the uh, Democratic Socialists seems to have a lot of young people, a lot of energy. Um, do you think that will uh, translate into the canvas and help this effort for Medicare for All? Yeah, I think um, our organization in particular can bring a lot um, of manpower on this issue and I think um, posting canvases would be um, good for us in that sense. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, thank you for talking to us, and thank you for being here, and thank you for signing up for Canvas. That's excellent. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having me. All right. Yeah, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Melinda Markowitz. I'm a registered nurse and president of the California Nurses Association. Excellent. And uh, can you tell us about this event today? Well, this, you know, the Medicare for All, the 2019, is going to be coming out soon. And we actually have created this movement across the United States um, to make sure that our current health care system is um, changed to Medicare for All. So the meeting today was just to get uh, educate and then also get uh, have people volunteer to, you know, canvas uh, districts, neighborhoods, uh, go to uh, farmers market and just explain to people what Medicare for All is. Excellent. And so in California, um, we spent uh, some time trying to pass SB 562, um, and it, we weren't so su successful. We haven't given up. But do you think it's better to push for uh, this issue on a state level or on a national level? I think both. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, federally, I think it's a, a good time. We took over Congress. And um, in 80% of the population in the United States want Medicare for all. So, you know, now is the time, and we need it. Patients are suffering and dying needlessly. And, you know, our current health care system is all about profits and not the needs of the patient, and that's got to change. Yeah, it's interesting that um, exactly what you said is they always focus on the uh, financial issue and not on the moral imperative. Right. Um, what's an answer to uh, the opposition's question about cost? Well, you know, it's, you know, to use that argument of cost, it's pretty ridiculous and not very truthful. Right now, individuals pay more in um, insurance premiums, deductibles, out-of-pocket expenses, and, um, and, uh, and, and, that's wrong. I mean, so people will actually save money uh, versus this old plan. And Medicare is not free. It's not free. We all pay for it. I'm a Medicare and I pay for it. So, um, but the difference is with Medicare for All is that you're going to be able to go to a doctor whenever you want, whoever you want, and get the care, preventative care, maintenance, uh, of care and be able to um, live healthy, you know, and not have, not be in medical debt. So are you optimistic about the upcoming bill then? I am. I am. Um, I think that we will have to continue to put pressure on those that do not support it um, and educate them. And this, this, um, a barnstorm that we're doing is really people that aren't going to sign on to the Medicare for All. We're going to be in their districts, we're going to be in their office, and um, the community is not going to stop. The American citizens aren't going to stop until they have Medicare for All. It's a human right, and the current insurance uh, health care is not working. It's broken, it's not sustainable, and it's definitely sick. And our communities have suffered enough, families have suffered enough, and the communities as well. Excellent. Well, thank you for being here and thank you for talking to us. You're welcome. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Please join us on the chorus and we'll rock this house. We old folks get care when we need it. Our doctors get paid by the feds. Yet some say it's socialized medicine. One payer is only for rent. Single payer. Nation.
nation must pay. Single payer, single payer, there is one single payer who gives a damn. Single payer, single payer, and that is our old Uncle Sam. Feels the folks who are greatly disabled and can't hold a job anymore. Can go to a doctor for treatment and Sammy will settle the score. Single payer, single payer, there's one single payer who gives a damn. Single payer, single payer, and that is our old Uncle Sam. But millions get injured or sickened, they're sunk in their medical costs. Insurance is right in the middle. To rip off the sick and the lost. Single payer, single payer, there's one single payer who gives a damn. Single payer, single payer, and that is our old Uncle Sam. In Italy, Germany, and Sweden, in Canada, England, and France, they're not worried sick about health care. Their taxes have paid in advance. Single payer, single payer, there's one single payer who gives a damn. Single payer, single payer, and that is our old Uncle Sam. There's one single payer who loves us, who hears when we moan in despair. Our kind Uncle Sam wants to help us with taxes for everyone's care. Single payer, single payer, there's one single payer who gives a damn. Single payer, single payer, and that is our old Uncle Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Raging Grammys. Let's go.